Hey family, I want to tell you about a new book written by John Almo and Patty Almo. It's called Introduction to Twee for American Diasporas. Now, the book is going to focus on helping you learn the Akan language, culture, and Ghana as a country. It's also a guide uh, through Ghana's most widely spoken language. Now, the book is supposed to help develop your awareness of social customs, cultural practices, uh, by combining historical, cultural, and social uh, context with language training and grammar. Uh, this is the book that you want to pick up um, before you start heading for your first trip to Ghana. Pick up Introduction to Twee for American Diasporas today. Hey fam, welcome back to the African Diaspora News Channel. I am Wengeli Zalal and bringing you the story. Today's story is about the billionaire Strive Masiwa. He was born in Zimbabwe and uh, fled with his family to Zambia and he went to school there. And um, I'll tell you his whole entire story, how he got to this place that he is right now. But the story is he just became the richest black person in Britain, uh, the richest meaning billionaire. So his uh, net worth is estimated $1.5 billion. That's a whole lot of money. Um, I saw an article on this as well, which is a great news. We'll talk about um, his achievement and how awesome this is. Uh, but this article was tapping into, um, they were asking questions that I didn't see in other news outlets. They were saying, when did he become a British citizen and why are they now claiming him because he's a billionaire, as we all know. Like, if, if you're doing well, everybody wants to claim you. If you're not doing well, no one wants to claim you. So they're not saying Zimbabwean billionaire or they're not saying, you know, a British Zimbabwean billionaire. The, the articles I've been seeing is um, the richest black person in Britain, the black British uh, billionaire. So. I'm, I, I get what that article is saying. They're really trying to take him on their side because guess what? He's a billionaire and, you know, they want you if you're a black rich man. But if you're not, then um, apparently you're a criminal. So that's the story about uh, Masiwa. He, he has an incredible story and um, I reported on him a few months ago on this channel. He became a board member the first African, I believe, board member of Netflix. And I was talking about how that will be important to diversify and to speak for our own continent instead of, you know, them assuming or some Muzungu sitting in that boardroom deciding what movies, what series that they should push on Africans at the end of the day. Our cultures, our society is different from the Western world. Let me show you a clip of me talking about him and joining the board um, on Netflix. We'll come back and discuss. Today I bring to you a great news, at least for Africans and black people in general, I would say, um, because uh, the Zimbabwean billionaire Masiwa, Strive Masiwa, is now on the board of Netflix. Let me read for you what Face to Face Africa wrote on this. Uh, the article will come back and discuss. Netflix has appointed Zimbabwean billionaire Strive Masiwa to its board of directors, making him the first African and the third international media executive to join the streaming giant's board in recent years. His appointment comes weeks after former U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Susan Rice said she was quitting her role on the board to join President-elect Joe Biden's administration. Quote, we are delighted to become Strive to the Netflix board, end quote. Netflix co-founder, chairman and CEO Reed Hastings said in a statement, his entrepreneurship and vision is building business across Africa and beyond will bring valuable insights and experience to our board as we work to improve and serve more members all around the world. The Zimbabwean business mogul joins the board with a wealth of experience from Africa and abroad. He serves on a number of international boards such as Unilever, National Geographic Society and Asia Society and the Global Advisory Boards of Bank of America, the Council on Foreign Relations in the U.S., Stanford University and Prince of Wales Trust for Africa. Maziwa said in a statement, Netflix is the forefront of bringing great entertainment from anywhere in the world to everyone in the world. And I looked forward to working with the board and all stakeholders to continue its traditions of innovation and growth. Maziwa is the founder and chair of the Econate Group, a Zimbabwe-listed mobile phone company. He also owns just over half of private company Liquid Telecom, which provides fiber optic and satellite services to telecom firms across Africa. 
Forbes estimates Maziwa's net worth at $1.1 billion. Maziwa is also a prolific philanthropist. He founded the Higher Life Foundation together with his wife, Titi. The foundation pays the school fees of 40,000 orphaned or low-income students in Zimbabwe, South Africa, Burundi, and Lesotho. The telecoms magnate is also the helm of the Ambassador Andrew Young Scholarship, which enables African students to attend the Morehouse College. Masiwa was named one of Time Magazine's most influential person in 2002. In 2014, he was selected to Fortune Magazine's list of world's 50 greatest leaders. He is a friend to many world leaders, often spearheading conferences. Masiwa, one of Africa's most influential figures and a champion for technology and young people. So this, this man is um, an incredible man, not just because he's a billionaire, but he also um, does something with his money. He pays it forward. He multiplies it, of course, and I'm, I'm never going to be against people making their money. I'm not going to be the one that says rich people are bad people. No, not all rich people got their money in shady business or corruption you know some people had to really work hard and i don't like taking that away from them so he worked hard and also he was giving back he has this youth program he helps youth trains youth and that's something that we should all appreciate him for let me tell you a little bit about his backstory we'll come back Masiwa, who is 66 years old right now was born in rhodesia now zimbabwe in 1961 his family fled civil unrest in his country when he was only seven years old. The billionaire attended primary school in Zambia before moving to the UK when he was 12. While in the UK, he attended a private school in Scotland before earning an engineering degree from the University of Wales. He worked briefly in Cambridge in the computer industry before returning to Zimbabwe four years after Zimbabwe attained its independence. He started working in the telecom sector before establishing his own telecom firm, Econet, in 1993, after waging a five-year battle against Robert Mugabe's administration to launch his business. Apparently, the Mugabe administration did not want to grant him license to operate his telecom firm, and so he took the issue to Zimbabwe's constitutional court and won the case, giving him the green light to establish his business. Having launched the telecom firm at the time, nearly 70% of the Zimbabwean population had never heard a phone ring. Masiwa's telecom firm is now the second largest telecom operator in Zimbabwe. Masiwa briefly fled to South Africa as a result of prosecution from local authorities, launching a new Econet Wireless Group. Today, the Econet Wireless Group also operates in Africa, Europe, South America, and East Asia Pacific Rim. So in 2010, he relocated to the UK again. He also has two houses in the US that once belonged to, I believe, Alec Baldwin and some other celebrities. Obviously, he's rich, so he can afford it. He's a billionaire. But as I said, I don't like the fact that they're just claiming him because now he has a billionaire title. And um, he's been helping African youth and he's been doing quite a bit. So he has done a lot for the African youth and um, he seems like a proud African to me, but um, if they want to claim him, okay, but it doesn't change the fact that he's African. Anyways, he is the first black billionaire in Britain. Let's just keep it positive, keep it moving. Uh, well done, uh, Masiwa, we are proud of you. Anyways, guys, do let us know down below what your thoughts are about this topic. I am Wengil Zalal, I'm bringing you the story. I will see you on the next one. Bye. Are you tired of the rat race in America? Are you ready to visit the motherland to relax and rejuvenate? Are you ready to explore all that Africa has to offer? Then check out the brand new Diversified Game Academy course, Prepare for My First Trip to Africa. Are you worried about being able to afford the trip? We got you. We will show you how to travel either on a budget or as a baller. Learn how to stress the value of the USD. Did you know that 100 United States dollars is worth over 1,000 South African Rand? or 10,000 Kenyan shillings, or 54,250 West African CFA? Are you worried about taking your kids? Get the game from Kellen Cash, a bona fide world traveler, having traveled to almost 20 countries, several of those in Africa. Get the game on taking your kids on their first trips. Learn how to find the best tickets, get the visas, and plan your own adventures in Africa. Don't let Eddie Murphy have all the fun. Plan your own coming to Africa trip 
starring you, produced by you, and featuring you. If you are ready for a life-changing experience, sign up for our course today, Diversified Game Academy. Get prepared and purchase at diversifiedgame.com. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and download the African Diaspora News Channel app, now available on Google Play and the Apple App Store. Thank you.